Well, hey everybody, Chris Joslin here with the Bluegrass Music Hall of Fame and Museum at Owensboro, Kentucky. And our special guest today is John McEwen, and he's going to be appearing here at the Hall of Fame on August the 13th with the Circle Band, so with special guest John Cowan. And uh, I know you've been to Romp, so we're thrilled to welcome you back to Owensboro on the 13th. Good to see you, John. Well, I'm really excited about playing the museum and the theater there. It's yeah. really a perfect time. The, the book I've been writing for two years has just come out. So will this, the making of Will the Circle Be Unbroken? Yeah, that's awesome. It has this, my brother's photographs are shown in this book. That's the reason it came out. Some wonderful shots, Mr. A. Cup. Mm -hmm. Came in the studio to record with a bunch of well, what he called, I don't know if they're old boys or young men or what. They're all covered with hair. <laughs> yeah, they don't have money for a haircut. That's probably what he thought. Well, I tell you, if you have a hillbilly bone in your body, you know about the Will the Circle Be Unbroken um, album that came out in 1972. So that's what this is really celebrating is, uh, is the making of this record and um so tell us a little bit about the book. Obviously, the 50th anniversary is this year, and you saw that coming, and your brother was so instrumental in pulling that together, both of you, and all these great photographs that we all haven't seen all the photographs in the book. But what was the genesis for writing the book and putting together this show for the 50th anniversary? Well, it started with knowing that Ken Burns was going to do a country music special, which came out three years ago. So a, a year before that, I started getting ready for that to happen. And I got all these photographs and I put it together with the show that I'll be doing in Owensboro, which is a video program, but it's not a video show. It's not a, it's not a point and click thing. We're in front of the screen and these pictures go by. And well, for instance, Maybell will set up. Well, on that old record, I started it like this. She'll say it from the screen, and then we start keep on the sunny side on stage. And we yeah. play the song as pictures scroll by. And, and it's wonderful photos of the sessions. And I included in the Maybell section some of her early Carter family, pictures that have never been seen, many of them. And so what you're of, saying, so what you're saying in, in terms of what folks can expect on the 13th is it's kind of multimedia. You've got the screen behind you with photographs, you've got some sounds from the sessions. It's a little bit of storytelling from you, but it's all kind of cloaked in live music as you guys perform many of the songs from the record. Yes, it is. It's multimedia, audio, video, and on stage live. And uh, we really have fun doing it because, well, we have to play to the video because I, I wanted to make it so it was easy for people to run it you know, going out there to those theaters. And once they start it, we got to, we play to the video, yeah, but uh, it covers everything about the Circle album, including the Grand Old Opry song, which is awful hard to remember all the words to. It's got more people in it than the Nashville phone book. <laughs> uh, you know? And Matt well, Carson is a great singer. Yeah. And Bluegrass World doesn't know him very well, but they're going to as, as time goes by. Matt's it's gonna be a fun, Pardon? It's going to be such a fun night because if you're a fan of the record like me, I'm probably going to be mouthing the words to the songs. I'm also going to be mouthing the banter that will probably be playing on the screen of Maybell Carter and all the... I mean, when, when you guys recorded that, whose idea was it to, I mean, capture some of those conversations and then also include those in the record. I mean, that seems unusual at the time, but boy, that's just part of the, just the, the awesome nature of that record that we all love is capturing those kind of intimate moments, those conversations between the musicians. That was my brother's idea. He was a real genius as a record producer and a photographer. And just a, he made the album cover. Uh, boy, it's a good thing he didn't leave it up to the band. It would have been a bunch of guys in front of a bus. But uh, it was, uh, Bill said, we got to keep the tape running all the time. That was my job was to monitor the three and seven eighths running tape, you know, the slow tape that needed to be changed every hour. And uh, 
to capture all the talking and everything that went between. Mm -hmm. And boy, am I glad we did because it worked out so well. Because one of the things he and I wanted to do was capture Doc Watson meeting Merle Travis for the first time. Yeah. And we got that on tape. Travis is sitting there playing and Merle walks in and walks up and starts talking to him. And I had to, I had to get in front of Merle and say, excuse me for a minute. I got to, I got to set this mic. I got to, my brother's in the control room going, you know, <laughs> get the mic. Merle was way off mic and he was very accommodating. And uh, anyway, we got that. I cut it into the, to the video too. And uh, so it, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, it's clear looking back. I mean, the dirt band, your career was really on the upswing, but in essence, you guys were really kind of making a record with your heroes. And, and it, it, it seems like you sort of knew what you had at the moment. I mean, you could, you felt the weight of it as it was going down, but I'm sure you were just having a great time, huh? It, it was very it was really strange. I mean, here I was going to be the first banjo picker to play with Earl Scruggs. And the weight of that was only lifted by playing with him. He was so good to play with, to pick with. And uh, I wanted a frail soldier's joy. That's what started it. You know, I finally asked Earl in Colorado. Uh, uh, Earl, I was taking him back to a club. He'd been playing for a few days. And driving them back. And I said, we got to be friends six months earlier. And I said, uh, Mr. Scruggs, well, Earl, uh, would you mind recording with the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band? And he said, I'd be proud to. And <laughs> that was, that resonated with me. And a week later, Doc Watson was at the same club. And I told Merle Watson, I said, I'd met him a few months earlier in LA. And uh, I said, that's that plan I told you about asking Earl. He said, yes. Oh, I got to introduce you to daddy. He introduced me to doc that night and doc mm -hmm. said, yes. So I told my brother and he got Merle Travis that week. And we didn't tell the band for a couple weeks. <laughs> when we did, Jeff said, who's Jimmy Martin? And I said, you're going to find out. That's right. And you're never going to forget him after that then. Oh man, they, they became good friends too because yeah. uh, he, he called them Little Jeffy. Hey, Little <laughs> Jeffy, get over here and sing. Play the guitar. Don't play it like this. Play it no, hard. You got to get that rhythm. You know? Oh my goodness. Now, Ray Martin, he told me he was hanging around the studio. Do you remember yes. Ray Martin being in the middle of that? Oh yeah, he sang on several things. He sang backgrounds on with Jeff and Gary Scruggs. And yeah. Ray Martin was a, a good guy to have there. Yeah, that's great. So fast forward to August the 13th. So somehow you pulled John Cowan into this, well, but, but as far as the other folks in the band, I know like Les Thompson, former Dirt Band, and he played a lot on that first record. A lot of yeah, the band. Yeah, he played, mandolin and, played yeah. mandolin and sang. Yeah. And, uh, and as, uh, as Doc Watson would say, what a great job he did too. He, he really nailed it. And then John Cowles, a former, a former uh, Dirt Band uh, alum that you've done a lot of work with. So well, tell us about John and, and Matt. Pardon? Tell us about John and Matt who will join you on the 13th. Well, John Cable was in the Dirt Band in the 70s. He went to Russia with us. We were first American group to go to the Soviet Union. Mm -hmm. That was really exciting, 28 sold out shows. Yeah. And uh, we did so well that they didn't let an American group in for another eight years. <laughs> wow. We let Elton John in a few years later, but he was British. And anyway, it was really a good time. And John, I've been playing with off and on for 30 years. And Matt Carsonis, <laughs> uh, Merle Briganti told me in Phoenix one time, you got to go out to this club and hear this guy, Matt. It was like 32 years ago. And I heard him and he was great. And mm -hmm. we've been playing together. Well, ever since, more often yeah. lately. And Matt plays mandola and sings great. He's mm -hmm. very funny. And he records audio books. He's done over 200 audio books. Hmm. Uh, he's a producer, engineer of the audio yeah. books for Simon. So you, are you, you going to have him record your book? I already did it with him. <laughs> That's awesome. And he recorded uh, 
You recorded an, an introduction with Steve Martin last week. That's great. And it went, went very well. And Hey, so speaking of the book, will you be doing a book signing on the 13th as well? Are you going to bring books with you and sign as part of them? I'll bring them. I'll sign them. And okay. I have them and some people have some people have emailed me that I got mine. It showed up today, and and yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'll be glad to sign them. Well, I'll tell you what: if, if if you have a bluegrass nerd or just a music nerd in your home, I mean, this would be a a great gift to think about getting a signed book. I know I'm going to get one, and just to just to relive the, the making of that record, and you know, seeing it through your eyes and through Les's eyes. I think it's going to be a really special evening. All the band members, Jeff Hanna, Jimmy Fadden, Les Thompson, Jimmy Ibbotson, they told their story of, of their impression of the album, plus a bunch of people like Oren Friesen, because he was very instrumental in getting the early word out on his mm -hmm. radio show, and, uh, and Del Bryant from BMI, whose parents were Felice and Boodle Bryant, wrote Rocky Top, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Del was around then. And uh, uh, Rodney Dillard, he mm -hmm. did the description in here. It's anyway, it's a really, yeah. will the circle be unbroken as far as the writers go too? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, but we can't host you guys. So, so the show is here on August the 13th at 7 p.m. You can get your tickets at the box office here. Or you can just go online at bluegrasshall.org and choose just the right seat and be prepared uh, for a fun evening and John's going to be busy with folks after the show and we'll make the book available and we'll sign. I can't uh, wait to hear, I can't wait to hear John Cowan sing. I, I first heard him sing with Newgrass in the seventies. Yeah. And they stayed with me. I had, a, you know, they were on the lower end of the scale riding around in a van. So I stayed with me. I was living in Idaho Springs, Colorado, and they all showed up to stay a couple nights. Um, and the main thing I remember is they, they all came in the house bringing their own pillows. <laughs> <laughs> they had already learned a few lessons. Bring, bring your own pillow. pillow. Oh, yeah. We always take our own pillows on the road. This is what a great idea. Uh, we okay. can't wait to, to have you here on the 13th. Hey, as we leave, I'm going to put you on the spot. Is there, is there an interesting sort of backstory from that week when you guys made the Circle record that maybe isn't part of the presentation or maybe a story that, that hasn't been circulated that much about an interaction perhaps you or the band had with an artist that was just really surprising or really precious to you as you think back all these years later? Well, the thing that comes to mind is not a pretty story, but it's, I tell it in this book about, I asked Josh Graves to be part of it. And he was all excited and everything. And, and, uh, he called me a week before the sessions. Oh, John, I, I, I told Lester about it. And he said, as long as I'm on his payroll, he doesn't want me picking with Earl. I can't do it. I'm sorry. I'm mm -hmm. doing it. And that really was. And then mm -hmm. oh, eight years later, I ended up playing with Lester Flatt and on, yeah. on one of his morning breakfast shows, sat in yeah. and it was okay. It was just the way they thought them, you yeah, know? Right. And, but it was strange. Yeah. And, uh, as far as any bad interactions, well, Junior Husky helped keep the thing together. Uh, he was always funny. I mean, he was our one stalwart, always there guy, you know? Yeah. And he, one time he picked up a maraca and he shook, shook it. Hey, we got to tell the engineer something's broken inside of this. <laughs> oh, and, and he got when, uh, just before circle, everybody, the dirt band guys were kind of tense and Maybell's getting ready and everything. And junior says, Hey, Jeff, get that washboard. And when she sings that verse about the hearse, make a backfiring sound. That'll be good for the record. <laughs> well, just, he kind of kept it light for everybody. Yeah. yeah. That's and great. we found out that everybody was such a fan of each other mm. that it took the pressure off of us. Yeah. Oh, Roy, I'm so glad to be recording with you after all these years. Mm. Well, Maybell, it's a fine idea. I'm glad we're here. You know, yeah. and that happened. Jimmy Martin was glad to be accepted by any group. Yeah, <laughs> right. It was great. Jimmy Martin had a right to his own opinion. 
Hi, I'm the world's best, I'm the world's best bluegrass singer, Jimmy Martin. And, and people agreed with him. He was yeah, uh, somehow. Well, it must have felt like you died and gone to hillbilly heaven and all these people just showing up and collaborating. And uh, boy, the magic really, really shows in the record. It, it stands the test of time. And I've heard, uh, you know, I've, I've read several music writers that say it's the most important, one of the most important records to ever come out of Nashville. And I, I don't disagree with that. Well, it came together very organically, I guess is the word we use nowadays, or very, it just fell into place. And the Dirt Band, Jeff and Jimmy and Ibby and Les, every, everybody came up to the mark of doing what we had to do. Mm -hmm. Ibbotson sang, Ibby sang Lost Highway beautifully. It was one of his best performances that year. And we were taking a big risk. We just had three records on the charts. Mm -hmm. House of Pooh Corner, Summer Shelley's Blues, and Mr. Bojangles. Bojangles is on 38 weeks. Mm -hmm. You follow pop record success with an acoustic bluegrass album. <laughs> yeah. The record company president said, well, I might sell 10 of these, but you're so intent about it. Well, let's go ahead and make it. <laughs> and, you know, and it was one of his proudest records. Yeah. And awesome. uh, he sold more than 10. <laughs> well, well, don't miss John McEwen and the Circle Band right here at the Bluegrass Music Hall of Fame and Museum in Owensboro, Kentucky on August the 13th, 7 p.m. Get your tickets at bluegrasshall.org or if you're in town, just pop by the box office. John, we can't wait to see you guys on the 13th. Thanks Good. so much for coming up. The 13th? <laughs> yes, the yeah. 13th. <laughs> 13th of October. No, it's August 13th. Coming up. <laughs> okay. All right, we'll we'll see you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.